have been for the last 11 years by Carlos Samano, who's in his 12th season as the head coach of the Tar Heels. Boy, he has done phenomenal work in Chapel Hill. He's had a lot of success. He's got a challenge ahead of him this season with 18 new players in corporate. And on the flip side, his counterpart tonight will be John Kerr, the Duke head coach, in his 15th season guiding his alma mater. Coach Kerr recently picked up his 140th career win. You see the players pause for a moment of solidarity. <laughs> Opening touch will belong to the Blue Devils tonight. All the best. Good luck. Nick Periano will get us underway. Off we go from Durham for the 98th time, the Blue Devils and the Tar Heels. Duke ranked fifth nationally in the polls this week. North Carolina receiving some votes, but the Tar Heels coming off that 1-0 victory over East Tennessee State on Tuesday. Big win for Duke as they opened up ACC play last week and having to come from behind and beat Louisville 2-1 behind the great performance by Shaq Muhammad that we highlighted in the open. A big win indeed. You know, three three ACC openers in a row for the Blue Devils. They're clicking on all cylinders right now. And we see Job Bean getting incorporated in the play right away. His first minutes of the game, played 58 minutes in the last match in his first game of the season. How big is that for John Kerr and the Blue Devils to have Jai Bean back and playing at a high level already? It's massive. I mean, he was projected as a starter coming into the season. Him and Shaq have a lot of chemistry. They're probably in terms of the press and repress and, and in terms of that effort up top, one of the more formidable combos in the country. So this gets them right back to what they expected to be going into the season. Nice run there by Muhammad. Couldn't quite track that one down. Andrew Cordes, the keeper for Carolina, up to stop it. And there you take a look at Jai Bean, the sophomore. Now look at this Duke line. Duke is not going to give the Tar Heels any time to build out of the back. This line of confrontation is really going to be on the Tar Heels 18. They are going to put them under pressure early and often. I feel like Duke is able to do that as Hamill off his line there. And a nice play by the graduate transfer, the graduate student, Elliot Hamill, there to make the nice play for the Blue Devils. John Kerr talking about just how high of a level Hamill's been playing at in the early stages of the season. Well, from a leadership perspective, it really starts in the goal for these Blue Devils, and it comes right through the spine of the offense with Peter Stroud as another captain in there. But Hamill, in his fifth year, as you mentioned, he has had big-time experience, went deep in the NCAA tournament last year and came back for a reason. He's only allowed one goal so far in the early juncture of the campaign. Fisher with a nice move. Despite not being ranked, these Tar Heels can play. So the, the Blue Devils are definitely taken seriously. Honestly, if not for incorporating so many new players and trying to get that chemistry, they probably have a few better results going into the season. I think the real challenge is a lack of lack of consistent training time with so many games in a quick pace. Good job by Amir Daly tracking back to get a foot on that. Don't you feel like, though, for this North Carolina team that it's just a matter of when, not if, things start to click for this program? This team will be good. This, this team, they brought in six six high-level transfers this year with a, a ton of experience. Um, they will be good. It's just a matter of time. One thing they've really dealt with is, is who's going to be the leader on this team. You know, with so many guys who've been leaders of their own institutions, maybe there's a little timidness coming into a school as pedigree as Carolina in terms of taking those reins. So they've sorted through a lot of that in these last few weeks. Mayor Daly down for a moment, but appears to be okay. Possession will stay with the Blue Devils. They haven't even talked about North Carolina's leading score. Another one of those transfers, Milo Garvanison, who actually is, beg your pardon, is not a transfer, but a fifth year playing his fifth year at North Carolina. He scored a couple of goals for the Tar Heels and has to be at the top of the scouting report for Duke tonight. Well, he's been arguably their most dangerous player from his left back position. You know, that left back position doesn't keep him from making booming runs up the pitch, but he's really been the, you would speak about leadership, he's been the unquestioned leader, I think, to start the season for this team, both in terms of points and in terms of presence on the field. Daly. Nice move, and knocked out the Blue Devils. Put some pressure here early. 
And that really is the Blue Devils' game plan from jump. Put them under as much pressure as possible. Hopefully score early, score often. They want to put this game away as quickly as possible. And the first corner of the night for the Blue Devils. Ruben Masalas will take the corner. What do you anticipate the Blue Devils trying to do on this first set piece of the evening? Uh, Ruben will whip it in. He plays a good ball, typically goes far post. They've got some big numbers in there. That one right on, but they're on top. Not much for Cordes to have to do. Masalas, a nice service in. North Carolina weathering the first almost five minutes of this contest. Have emotions, you think, settled down for these two clubs now? I think so. Yeah, they, there's been a couple of tackles. They've, everyone's touched the ball at least once. With the, with the high level players in this pitch, this one will settle down pretty quickly. Duke having to build from the back here. Just so many weapons for this Duke team. We obviously highlighted Muhammad at the top of the broadcast, and I haven't talked a lot about Peter Stroud, the All-America from a season ago. Remember the ACC watch list. Here's another nice run for the Blue Devils. It was Jai Bean, who we've already highlighted, making the nice push for Duke. Yeah. The Blue Devils can come at you in so many ways. Diversity. You know, yeah. Jai Bean brings another element. Scotty Taylor got off to a really hot start early this season. Jai Bean brings a different dynamic. And we see Jai, he not only ran that ball down, but the physical presence of mind to, to bring it down and try to get a ball across. Uh, going back to, to Peter Stroud. Yeah. Peter Stroud, you know, reigning ACC Midi of the Year. Herman Watchlist, arguably best Midi in the country. He is an unquestioned locomotive and leader of this team in the midfield. And already a couple corners now for Duke in the early moments of this opening half. Masalas, the service in. The header is on by Lopez, but a nice play by Cordes to gobble it up. And Tino Lopez is another guy. We see him getting involved offensively. He's, he's in this three-back system for Duke. He's the middle. He's the unquestioned leader in the back. We, he does a good job of directing, directing things out of the back in communication with Hamill. We'll see him right now open up, provide an option. Take another look at this corner. A great opportunity for Duke to strike early in the match. A good opportunity. Duke had runs. Tino went to the far post. Great ball in by Ruben. You and Sue will have to do a better job of man marking and staying with those runs. But if you're North Carolina, where do you look to try to get that spark offense? We've already talked about a couple of guys, Williams and the fifth-year player, Garvin Eason, who have been the, the focal points for, for the Tar Heels. But who else do you look to get involved to maybe provide a spark for this North Carolina squad? They're, I mean, they're, they're, they're littered with talent. I mean, I think a lot of it's going to have to come with the wings. I expect this midfield to be pretty cluttered. With, uh, with some of the talent running around in there as we see Peter Stroud win it back. Daly goes down again, another foul against North Carolina. Duke gets the possession. This one's already pretty chippy as you would expect in a rivalry game. Muhammad drawing a crowd, as you might imagine. Tries to work it ahead from a solace. And we really see what UNC is doing from a pressure standpoint, what they just did. They want the Blue Devils to put the ball in the air. Uh, the strength of these Blue Devils is keeping it on the ground and playing a very high level of technical soccer. If it's in the air and boom it around, it gives the Tar Heels an advantage. So now that we're past the feeling out process and both these squads have sort of figured out what the other squad wants to do, What's the adjustment inside of the adjustment now for, for these two squads? Well, I think the, the adjustment is really sticking to their game plans. You know, Duke's going to put them under a lot of pressure, not let them play out of the back. We're going to see this line push up right now. You know, UNC wants to take their time. They want to slow the game down. Duke's a great counterattack team. So UNC wants to really slow this down as they're doing right now, knock it around, and try to play through their wings. Clark had a look at it. 
Now, really more of that. You know, getting yeah. the ball to Ken Clark. He's a, he's a great target nine who can turn at you as well as hold it up. You know, he's been he's been nursing an injury and getting back in his flow, but they expect him to be a really big player for them this year. A player who didn't see any action for North Carolina last year, but came off the bench in that COVID season in 2020. Had a big goal in the NCAA tournament against Charlotte as well. He did. Opportunity now for Duke. Periano leaving it off from a solace. That one is in, and a goal early for the Blue Devils. It's Amir Daly who puts Duke on the board. So last year the Blue Devils scored two goals inside of 14 minutes in this rivalry game. Amir Daly had one of them. We're 10 minutes in, Amir Daly puts him on the board. But that was great teamwork building that play up. Really started with Shaq repressing and winning that ball in the midfield. Periano gets wide, plays a great ball across the box. First of the season for the junior, Amir Daly. We see Periano doing a good job of winning that ball. Ruben Marsalis played a great ball across the box. Amir Daly with the effort to get there. As you mentioned, his first collegiate goal against the Tar Heels. And Daly, a flair for the dramatic again in this rivalry matchup. Well, second against the Tar Heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had one hit. Yeah, his first one last year was against them. Yeah. Correct, yep. So when that light shade of blue is across the field from Daly, ratchets it up a little bit. There's a few guys who tend to ratchet it up in this game. You know, Scotty Taylor's one of them. Scotty Taylor, we haven't seen him yet, but he has, I believe, two to three goals against UNC. His career always seems to show up big. Yeah, there's guys on the other side, too, that always get up on the darker shade of blue is across the pitch. North Carolina looking for the equalizer here. Opportunity for the Tar Heels, and we're square and one. We talked about him earlier. Clark, the junior, with a big goal to tie it up for the Heels. Just like that, and almost a replica of inverse of the Duke goal. Within 29 seconds, a couple of goals. And one ball really beat these Blue Devils. That ball over the top opened it up. See a great driven ball across the box. Team Clark, right place, right time. It's a good finish. It's a Waller and goal. Clark, no stranger to the big goals. We talked about the NCAA tournament goal against Charlotte. Man, how about the response from North Carolina within 30 seconds of the Blue Devils scoring? The first, the initial five minutes after any goal score is typically the most dangerous time, and the Blue Devils, I mean, the Tar Heels responded very quickly. And that was Goldar with that, that cross across the assist. He's off to a good start this season. Not sure many expected this flurry of activity in the first 10 minutes of this match. Well, the Tar Heels doing what they didn't do last year in the 3-0 defeat. They did not respond. They have responded very quickly. Has to make Carlos Samano and the North Carolina staff very happy the way this team, who's still trying to gel and come together, responds after Duke takes the early lead. Well, that's a sign of a good team, a team that's forming that can respond under pressure and react to adversity. Cameron Fisher for North Carolina. And a throw in for Duke. Cameron Asito there, a nice play for Duke defensively. Fisher, another one of those veterans for North Carolina, 33 matches over the last three seasons. There's a lot of newcomers on this team, but there's a fair amount of veteran leadership still sprinkled in, which is hopefully going to be a good balance for the Tar Heels throughout the season. Peter Stroud. Now Asito from Asalis, who had the nice ball earlier that led to the first Blue Devil goal. Now we see these Tar Heels pressing higher now. You know, they're really responding by putting more pressure and making the Blue Devils work for it. Cortez, dangerous there, but lets it go over the touchline and wins the goal kick. Yeah, dangerous, especially with Shaq Muhammad closing yes. in on you. Cortez has played at a really high level in the keeper position for North Carolina this year. 14 saves, that's number two in the ACC as play begins tonight. And the goalie gave up a moment ago, just the fifth. 
that he's allowed so far this season. So two keepers that are playing at a pretty high level. Very high level. These Tar Heels have lost two matches, but they don't concede many goals. And Cordes, one of those transfers, we talked about it, the transfer from Portland. Another guy with a lot of experience yeah. to perform well. Possession one by the Blue Devils. Perhaps hard to justify momentum this early in a match after each team has scored a goal in the first 10 minutes, but do you get the sense that whichever team scores next is going to take a giant step forward in, yeah. in this match? It's been pretty even. I don't think either team has really solidified a grip on the momentum yet, but it's back and forth, but you're right. Ne next goal in will go a long ways in terms of how this first half is dictated. There's a foul against Duke. You mentioned earlier just how chippy things are getting. Perhaps these officials trying to settle things down early to not let the contest get out of hand. Yeah, the officials definitely want to maintain control of this one. Want to finish with 11 players, not let it get out of hand. That's a good hard tactical foul by Kenny Hull. Kenny Hot. The rookie out of New Jersey. Another New York Red Bull product has some, has some exposure to Sam Williams in there as well as a couple other guys. Comes from a nice soccer family. His dad played at Seton Hall. Now a great opportunity for North Carolina. We talk about snatching some momentum. Sebastian shot there along with Gervonian. Yeah. See him coming up from his left back position. We'll see him all over the pitch tonight. And he's a very versatile player. He's played in the midfield for UNC throughout his career, so he can step up a line if necessary. We'll talk about a guy who can step up a line. Peter Stroud steps into that pass. Chips one ahead for Muhammad. Finds his running mate Shaq over there on the wing. Muhammad dancing through traffic. And Duke forced to retreat a bit as they try to build this attack. Not a bad idea, just a little too much weight on that pass. Sure. And Duke wants to retreat and swing it around when necessary, but not let these Star Hills get any momentum coming at them. Fifteen minutes in, if you're just joining us, man, you've missed a lot. Two goals within the span of 30 seconds of each other. I'd say to answer your question from a few minutes ago, these, yeah. these teams have settled into this match. I think so. Another takeaway. This is Clark who had the goal for North Carolina. And a nice defensive play again by Aceto. North Carolina wins the corner, but a really good defensive play by the Blue Devils. Very nice defensive play by Aceto getting down. That's always a dangerous tackle outside of the foot in the box, but he did get ball. Great way to stand him up and, and decipher his momentum before going down. And we see Akeem Clark, you know, as we mentioned, he's, he's a difference maker for these Tar Heels in terms of physical presence up top. Short corner by North Carolina. Garbanian. Settled nicely, and now flared in, headed away by Duke. Mohamed, just so quick through the midfield. He can settle the ball so quickly and get them started in the attack. Keep an eye on Stroud, flanking down that wing. Stroud has it now. That went off a of Tar Heel. Now Stroud, looking for an angle. Stroud into the box, and he just missed. Stroud is absolutely lethal at turning those corners just when you think he's going to ride it out of bounds or take it back. Does win the corner, though, for Duke. And we see Shaq find Stroud out wide. Loses it the first time. Looks like he's going to turn it back, and he turns the corner. He's in the box. A few inches away from scoring another one for the Blue Devils. This will be the third corner for Duke already. Masalas will have the honor. And UNC needs to do a better job of man mark than we all know where it's going. This far post. Here we go. Uh, that one went near post. And ushered out nicely by North Carolina. Possession staying with Duke. Tight, tight, tight. 
And we see both of these wing backs for Duke. Amir Daly consistently involved offensively. We see Ruben Marsalis on the other side. In the box. Stroud again. And that one deflected. Another corner one by Peter Strepp. And we'll see Stroud continue to push. I know one thing he really worked on over the summer was contributing more on the offensive front in terms of points. You know, always has been a defensive presence and run that midfield, but did a great job early in the preseason. A couple of goals. Thank you. Masalas for Muhammad. Now right back to Masalas. That one hops over the boot there of Muhammad. But back to Stroud for a second. He was talking in a recent article just about his evolution of how he approaches the game. And I thought one of the things that was really impressive about Peter Stroud is he said, you know, I'm making sure that I'm in a good place so that I can help others on my team also be in a good place and help them along. Really mature from the Blue Devil uh, Junior. I think when you see a player of his caliber, they don't always make their teammates better. And that's something he's very conscious of, of not only his own personal development, but realizes the impact he can have on others, what he can bring out of others, the motivational figure he can be for his teammates, and the example he can be for his teammates. And that's something he takes very seriously and really is an extension of this coaching staff on the pitch. Is some of that also just his love for the game as well? Absolutely. You know, we had him with us for part of the summer this year, and the thing that impressed me the most, he's arguably best player in the country, first player training, last player to leave. You know, very humble attitude, but also confidence in his ability. Another good play that time by Clark, who's having a whale of a first half for North Carolina. Had the, or check that, it was Matt Edwards who had the nice defensive play. I beg your pardon, for North Carolina. Looks like Marsalis took a knock on that, and he's calling for a trainer. Go ahead. Yeah, good job by Edwards closing that down. Hopefully Marsalis isn't hurt too badly. It'll be big for the Blue Devils. Had the assist on Duke's goal earlier this match. And has been instrumental in what Duke has done on the set pieces off their four corner kicks so far. Yeah, both him and Periano out there yeah. have done a, done a good job on those set pieces. Take another glance here as Edwards and Masalas get tangled up. And it was a good tackle. He just caught Marsalis on the follow through. Always dangerous and a bit scary when you see the ankle bend back like that. Masalas has had some big moments in a Duke uniform. Tying goal against UCLA in the second round of the NCAA tournament in the 87th minute. Member of the ACC All-Freshman team a year ago, and he's going to have to be helped off. Looks like he is favoring his lower body a bit. Yeah, that ankle just got caught underneath him on that tackle. Marsalis is a fantastic player. He's ranked as high as fourth-ranked freshman in the country last year. Big-time recruit. A couple of goals and nine assists for John Kerr's club. And hopefully he can walk this off. We see Luke Thomas coming in. I expect with Luke coming in, Duke will go to more of a 3-4-3, not push quite as high on that wing. Thomas, the junior out of Charlotte, already a goal for Duke this year. And now Periano will take this corner for the Blue Devils. Drives it, and it's headed out. And we see these last few set pieces, a conscious effort to find Jabin on that mm -hmm. front post and get him involved. He does a great job of flicking a ball, you know, when he can get around it across the box for a teammate to run on and also has the ability to get it down low into that near corner. A lot of time spent attacking there by the Blue Devils. North Carolina trying to flip the pitch here. 20 minutes gone in this opening half from Koskinen Stadium on a beautiful Friday night in Durham. Settled by Muhammad. Takes a bump. We play on. Nice play by Peter Stroud. Possession remains with North Carolina. Good job by Peter. Good job by Scheidt to win that ball in the midfield. Now Clark in the corner. Ferried away by Duke.
And both these clubs not foreign to playing in tightly contested matches. Not at all. I mean, Corner one by North Carolina. And that's really the, the, the nature of ACC soccer. It is. No nights off, and every game's going to be competitive. A North Carolina team that was down with less than four minutes to go in the NCAA tournament last year. And or earlier this year against Air Force, it was their first comeback win since they beat Wake Forest in the NCAA tournament. So accustomed to, to playing from behind at times this year. Same story for Duke. Blue Devils got behind in that matchup against Louisville last time out. And, yeah. and a couple goals to, to come back and win it. Yeah, both of these teams have a good come from behind victory as we see Gravanian chasing that ball down. He was a catalyst really to that Air Force win. He played the ball across the key white for the game winner. Goes down, that might be a card, and it is. It might be. I think that's the end of the tactical fouls. It was a smart play to slow down momentum, but that'll be it for that. Till Zinhard issued the yellow. And Till's a smart player. He's another one of these guys at Tulsa transfer. He knows if Shaq Muhammad gets a head of steam and turns you, going to the box with, without numbers, that's going to be danger. Coach Samano is saying that he's one of those guys that brings a maturity to this North Carolina defense. He does. He does. Both in terms of presence, he mainly leads. You know, he's, I haven't heard him be much of, of, of the booming vocal leader, but everything's by example. The defensive player of the year in the American Conference, as you mentioned, playing last year at Tulsa, working toward his MBA at North Carolina. Periano's getting off to a good start for the Blue Devils. He's been very clean on the ball, very decisive, typically one or two touches, but doing a good job getting their offense rolling. Who's impressed you on the North Carolina side of things? Uh, it's been a King Clark, really. Uh, up top, he's done a good job holding the ball up, obviously scored the goal. He's been dangerous. He finally looks healthy. You know, first few games he, he appeared, looked like he was still working his way in, but he's playing with a lot more confidence this evening. Now Periano and Stroud. Off this free kick for the Blue Devils. What do you look for Duke to do here? 22 minutes to go in the half. Well, I think you can keep it short, which is what I would expect, but you've also got numbers on, on the back post. And Tar Heels haven't done the best job of marking. Periano plays it. Out for Stroud. Fancy footwork by the... Blue Devil, but taken away by North Carolina. You can never take a rest with Peter Stroud. We see him lose it offensively. He immediately represses and almost wins it back. Definition of a two-way player. Clark again. Oh, physical play. Clark. And a foul on Clark. Clark's a handful. Good job by Luke Thomas tracking back to get in front of him. Clark is an absolute handful. These Blue Devils are definitely going to have to sort this out. activity earlier. Both these clubs have really settled in nicely. A couple of quick goals and now it's just back to playing and fighting through the game plan that both teams have crafted heading into this match. Pace has slowed up a bit. We see more space opening up. But still this is a very compact game. I mean they're, they're going at each other. Thomas winning the throw in for Duke. We talked last time the Blue Devils had an opportunity about going to the back post. You feel like that's something that Duke has, has really done at a high level over the last couple of matches, is really committing to going to that back post? Well, it's really varied. It's based on scenario. Early on, the first two we saw back posts, and then I figure UNC has got some game tape on it, and they'll sort it out and mark up a little bit better. They've gone near post. So I think this team is, is mature enough where they can adapt to the style of the game and flow, and they have a couple of different, different options in those plays, but they'll mix it up. We'll see far post again, but. Oh, 
nice play through some traffic. Sakeem so Clark again. <laughs> again. He's a problem right now. Into the box. <laughs> Trying to funnel it toward the middle. And Garvin Ian, but it was taken away nicely by Duke, obviously having that North Carolina threat marked. Nice night here in Durham. Chris Edwards, great to be with Cedric Burke. Delighted to have you with us from Koskinen Stadium in Durham. 98th meeting between Duke and North Carolina. And what's been a flurry of activity already. And Shaq Muhammad trying to get Duke on the board again. With that one, that's right on. You see North Carolina has dominated this series, winning 50 times. The Tar Heel is 8-2 in the last 10 matchups with the Blue Devils. And Duke, after winning last year, Cedric, trying to win back-to-back -back matchups against North Carolina for the first time since Duke won four in a row back in the late 90s. Back in the late 90s. I remember those guys. <laughs> But yes, this is a phenomenal game by the Blue Devils last year in a series that has definitely been recently dominated by these Tar Heels. Carlos Samano, the North Carolina head coach, 10-3-2 against Duke since he took over the reins in Chapel Hill and 5-1 and against the Blue Devils here in Durham. And what a win this would be for North Carolina, a team that is still trying to find its footing early in this season. Yeah, these two teams are on two different spectrums right now. You know, Duke has brought back most, most of everything. They're number five in the country, and they're trying to pick up and have picked up where they left off, whereas these Tar Hills are still trying to figure it out. All the pieces are there. For Clark again. Had that one taken away. You can definitely see from a UNC attack perspective, they want to skip lines whenever possible and find Clark's feet so they get numbers up the field. Clark had the goal for North Carolina to tie things up after Daly got Duke on the board first. We mentioned Duke bringing everybody back from last year, a team that lost a, a heartbreaker of a match. As that one to Daly in the box. Daly. Well, well most everyone back. There's, yeah, a, well, there's a guy sure. who scored about 15 yeah. goals who's missing. But, but a, a, a lot of pieces back yeah. for that Duke team. A lot of pieces. You feel like that is motivated? this Duke team with, with so many pieces back from a team that lost in heartbreaking fashion to St. Louis here last year? Right. These guys are back for a reason. There's several guys who could have gone who could have gone professionally over the summer who stayed. There's fifth-year guys who decided to come back. You do that because you know the type of team and teammates you have. Yeah, Thoriel Farson, pre pretty good for John Kerr's club a season ago. Not, not a bad player. Number, number three draft pick <laughs> to the Dynamo last year. Pretty good. Yeah. Muhammad threw some defenders and just lost that one at the top of the box. And Muhammad needs to keep combining with his teammates. There's not anyone he cannot beat one on one. And we see Amir Daly continues to get in this box and streak up that corner. Daly scored the first goal of the night for the Blue Devils, looking for an angle, and it's headed away. Blue Devils couldn't finish. And Amir Daly is playing in an outside back position now, but he's no stranger, stranger to offense. He started his, his career as a right midfield midfielder. Another flurry of activity in front of Cordes. And Duke almost scored the tie-breaking goal. Very close. Good job coming across that box. Luke Thomas gets it across. Periano just couldn't get it down enough. Jai Bean right there, too, for Duke. Wouldn't have that been something for Bean to come back and in his second match score a big one? It would have been. And we see the strategic substitution pattern. We mentioned Scotty Taylor earlier. Coming into the season with a lot of confidence, a couple of early goals. Always plays well against these, these Tar Hills. Expect something from him. And we see Frederick coming in for Amir Daly. Frederick uh, started last match. Has really been a breath of fresh air in terms of his early maturation. He is from a physical presence. He is lightning fast on that wing, and, and he can play. Serviced in, Muhammad trying to track another one down. A battle, and there was North Carolina right there battling with Taylor. Possession stays with the Blue Devils, and another opportunity on a set piece for Duke. 
Looks like Periano would take this one. We're probably going shorter near post. Remember, Ruben Masalas went out for Duke earlier in this half. We've not seen him come back. Periano a little long, and nothing the Blue Devils could do there. Inside the last 15 minutes of the half, both clubs would love to get one before the intermission. Yeah, been very back and forth. We see a guy who's come in for the Tar Heels, number 10, Cafaro. You know, he's, he's a guy who started his first match a couple of games ago against Pitt. Coach Samoy says he arguably is their most technical player, one of their best players in training, and he's a guy they really want to get going offensively. What have you seen from North Carolina on both ends since they tied the match up earlier in this half? I think they've been more patient. Patient yet deliberate in the attack. Uh, trying to use the wings much more often. If you see, they're spreading guys with Clark as the focal point up top. So really, when they can get the ball to him early and skip a line and, and springboard the uh, uh, attack as quickly as possible, they're doing that, but also using the wings to build. There was Clark went down, and that'll be a foul. They say against Clark. It was Peter Stroud who took a bit of a tumble. Clark having a conversation with our referee. Tell him, sir, I'm a big boy. I hit the weight <laughs> room. Don't, don't punish me for being big. <laughs> you appreciate that from an official, though, having a conversation with a player. You do. should never be about the official. should be about the players. You appreciate an official who, who can calm players down and have a conversation. Especially in a game of this magnitude with so much emotion on the exactly. line. Exactly. Nice takeaway by North Carolina. Goldhart took it away. Uncharacteristic giveaway for Tino Lopez. He's been so strong to start this season. Just really, really got the ball caught under his feet without an option to go to. We really see the interior middies of this Duke team defensively just collapsing. Just collapsing and always bringing numbers. Late call goes against North Carolina. I think Mohammed was asking perhaps for a card there on the North Carolina player, but the foul called nonetheless and an opportunity for the Blue Devils. Final 12 minutes of the opening half. Carlos Samano getting an explanation. Now Peter Stroud will engineer it for the Blue Devils. Stroud, one of the big leaders on this team, team captain for Duke. All-America selection a season ago. It's been marked tightly, as you might imagine, by North Carolina tonight. Clark's gotten free several times. Nice idea. Clark goes down. And this might be a card against Duke. I think it will. Yeah, I believe it will go against Lopez as well. And that's the frustration foul. Tino lost it a few minutes ago. We saw him come in a little bit sloppy for the tackle. He was fortunate there, and he just reacted to losing that ball. He won it cleanly, just couldn't build it out. And now perhaps a great opportunity for North Carolina here. After the card, the Tar Heels have a great opportunity to Break the tie. First to look at the foul. Well, we see Clark with a good turn in the middle, head of steam, trying to slot this ball through. Tino does a good job stepping in, didn't cleanly win it. Frustration foul, taking Clark out there. But now if you're North Carolina with this opportunity, where do you go? Who do you look for? Uh, well, it all starts with number 22, Gervanian. He's going to be on this ball. This is within his range. They've scored a few long-range long goals this year, so this will be 
one watching a rebound. Whoever wins the second ball, if there is a second ball, but this may be a shot. Right on. Oh. And Gafar nice Gafaro stepped in and took yep. that, yeah. A little bit of deception and deviation for the Tar Heels. And usually in matchups like this, isn't it someone that maybe you don't expect that, that that maybe has not lit up the stat sheet to this point in the season that has the big play or the big goal for their respective team? It's usually the small wrinkles you can't prepare for. You know, that guy who's looked lightning in practice, you may have not seen on game tape. And a foul there against Duke. Gives it back to North Carolina. It was against Wayne Frederick, the rookie who was working hard for the Blue Devils and has really given Duke a lift over the last couple of matches. Good job by Aceto to win that ball back. Tar Heels will look more dangerous building out of the back, much more confident last 10 minutes or so at beating the Duke press. Now Thomas. Settles. And knocked out. Another opportunity for the Blue Devils. In the last 10 plus minutes of the half. Very well defended on that play by Matt Edwards. Smartly stood Thomas up until it was time to go down. Now we see Key White coming in for these Tar Heels, who could be the fastest player in the country. Had two assists in the spring game against these Blue Devils. It was really the difference maker. Already has a game winning goal against the Air Force this season. Let's see how this thing switch up for the Tar Heels. Yeah, didn't play for North Carolina last year. It had been 468 days since he last played for the Tar Heels when he scored that key goal against Air Force in the season opener. He's a player. He's another guy we had in the summer, and he's the type of kid you can hear him when he runs by. I don't have that kind of speed. <laughs> <laughs> Service in, pinballs around, and finally cleared out of danger by North Carolina. What's the old saying? Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. I don't know. You get a few stretches in. You. <laughs> Could be also in for North Carolina. Cameron Kerr checking in for Duke, as you can see there for Periano. Cameron Kerr, the elder of the two sons for John Kerr, the Duke head coach. Cameron Kerr's had some, some very good good games. Can really be lightning in the bottle as a super sub. Had the game-winning assist earlier this year against Michigan. Hot through the middle there for the Blue Devils. Kenny Hyde has been such a quality addition to this midfield to pair with Stroud. Thomas was working hard there. Nice takeaway by North Carolina. I expect this press from the Tar Heels to be ramped up significantly with Key White now in the game. And we see them win it back right there. has really turned into, as a foul on Duke, really turned into that defensive battle that maybe we expected it to be coming into the contest. Yeah, mo most of this game right now is being played in the middle middle 60 yards of the park. It's all in the midfield. It's very chippy. A lot of tactical fouls. Edwards forced to retreat for North Carolina. A lot of weight on that pass for Cafaro, and the throw in for the Tar Heels. Almost a turnover for the Blue Devils, and that started with Scotty Taylor's pressure. Thomas right there with Keenan Hodd. Spacing not great there for the Blue Devils. Peter Stroud, service ahead, looking for Daly. 
who's been big for Duke already in this first half. A couple of great looks. Now shaking free for the Blue Devils. Trying to get loose, unable to do so. And that's Frederick over Yeah, it there. is Frederick. Yep. But, he, but he plays exactly like Amir Daly and is, is just as potent. You don't lose anything when he comes into these games. And they'll play the exact same style with him. They'll keep him very high as an outside winger who will, who will combine offensively as often as possible. Offside called against Duke there. Kind of foul against North Carolina. You can see the official trying to rein things in a little bit here. Each side's been issued one yellow in this first half. I think so far, officials doing a good job keeping control of this one, which, to your point earlier, is hard during a rivalry game. You know, there's a lot of emotions, a lot on the line. Frederick making a run there for Hook, a little too much weight on the pass. Now Taylor, who's been big against these Tar Heels. Taylor back to pick it up. Carolina player down behind the play here in the box. So an opportunity perhaps for the Blue Devils. But it's cleared by North Carolina. That was much closer than it yeah. looked. Shaq Muhammad almost slid that ball through, and Scotty Taylor was wide open and in position. I didn't see what happened on the injury over there. Is that Gravanian down? It looks like it's Riley Thomas who might be down for North Carolina. And they will call for the trainer. And we hope he's okay. That would be a big loss yeah. for these Tar Heels. He's, an, he's another guy who's been his been a leader for this team early in the season. Very, very consistent force in the back. Go ahead. Over 30 games for the over the last two years for Thomas. See if we can get a look at maybe what happened to the junior out of Atlanta. 15 and white. Ooh. Mm. Looks like he deflected that ball and just got a little off balance. And again, foot got caught under him. And we saw on the Duke side, Masalas come out earlier this half with an apparent ankle or lower body injury. And now the North Carolina training staff tending to Riley Thomas here. And we hope he's okay in this yeah, type of absolutely. game. We want to see these teams at full strength. Well, any game you want to see people at full strength. They're sure. not here to see folks get hurt or not help their club. Coach Kerr looking for his fourth career win against North Carolina. And knew this was going to be a dogfight coming in. We talked to Coach Kerr before the match. He said, you know, North Carolina is going to be ready for us, not a walk in the park for the Blue Devils this evening. And we can see the passion seeping off of Coach Kerr as he's given some instruction to Luke Thomas. I believe he just did a pirouette and demonstrated what he would have done in that situation. That coach could still get after it a little bit in training. Coach still has it. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's been working out a bit for the alumni game tomorrow morning. I expect at least a brace out of you tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Let's temper our expectations a little bit, my friend. <laughs> Good to see Riley Thomas jogging off. Putting a little bit of weight, it looks like, on that ankle. Let's see how North Carolina elects to play it. Looks like they are going to substitute in for Riley Thomas. Looks to be a Amada Quack coming in. But we'll get a couple of subs because a Quack will go up top. Looks like Parker O'Farrell coming in to go in the back. Help me out, please. Final five and a half minutes of this opening half from Koskinen Stadium. It's been 
everything we expected it would be. Absolutely. The rivalry has lived up to it thus far. Dumped down. And Duke will have the throw in. Final five plus minutes of the half. What's the mindset for these two clubs as they head toward intermission? Clean slate. Last thing either team wants to do is give up a goal, create any momentum going into the second half for their opponent. So clean slate and try to get one before the half. All right, here we go. Duke building here. And really, that North Carolina press it has really slowed, slowed down this Duke team that had so much success in the first few moments of the match. Really has. You know, they've been very strategic you know, with it early on. They weren't really, line of confrontation was really up towards the center circle. Now they're keeping the Blue Devils in their defensive third. Is the press, uh, the way North Carolina is currently executing, is that something the Tar Heels can sustain into the second half? They can. Well, when you talk to coach, it's all situational. Sure. You know, and he, he trusts his players to figure it out to some extent, expects his leaders to communicate. But, yeah, I mean, it's especially with, with, with these new age college rules where you can unlimited subs, I mean, you can keep it up for sure. They've got a lot of talent and that can come into those up top positions. And both these clubs have copious amounts of depth. Yep. DeFaro on ahead. Here's the speedster White trying to track it down. A good defensive play again by Aceto for the Blue Devils. That was a phenomenal defensive play by Aceto. Not only winning the ball, but being able to collect it and, and kickstart the offense coming out of the back. Now Muhammad had it knocked away. Peter Stroud looking for Frederick, but it's settled. And now out to the middle of the park. Fisher. Here's Muhammad again. Turns away and just misses. The amount of one-on-one of -on -one talent that Shaq possesses sometimes can be a gift and a curse. When you know you can beat any player at any given time, we saw right then three guys collapse on him, and he still was able to spin and get a shot off, but he had a few teammates who could have sprung a little bit earlier. Got to make sure he keeps his head up and doesn't get sucked into a 1v1 game. You know, we see three Tar Heels. That's a 1v3 right there. He's able to still spin out of it and get a good shot off. That corner was wide open. That's got to be frustrating for the Tar Heels when you're doing all the right things, you're collapsing, you're, you're defending with numbers as you should be, and he's still able to be that dangerous. If you're Muhammad, are you pleased with the quality of shot you got off there? No. Now, Shaq Muhammad, he's the type of guy who wants to improve every day. We hear Coach Kerr talk about that consistently. So he's not satisfied with anything but the best. Perhaps an opportunity to build here for North Carolina. Edwards. And now Duke settles with less than two minutes remaining in the half. Good job by the Tar Heels shutting it down. That was Gervanian stepping in once again. Clark trying to race this one down in the corner. He goes down again. Asking for a call, none comes. Well, we can see every time Key White touches the ball, they are closing down on him as quickly as possible. They are fully aware of how dangerous he can be. Now the dangerous Muhammad. And nice play on both sides. Final 60 seconds of this first half. Still time for Duke to build. A 
Aceto on ahead for Peter Stroud. North Carolina, you can see, engaging a little higher now, forcing Duke to play it back to Hamill. Good job by Hamill shutting that space down, not leaving any opportunity for Key White to run into that space. Now it's Muhammad. And that's over the touchline. So North Carolina with the throw in, and that might take us to the intermission. North Carolina in no hurry to toss this one in. And we will head to the intermission right where we started, all squared up. Each side a goal in the first half. Duke strikes first, North Carolina the equalizer 30 seconds later. What's your takeaway on the first 45 minutes? I thought a, a great start by the Blue Devils, an equally impressive response from these Tar Heels. Very up and down first half. Don't think either team really, really solidified momentum. This is a new game. We were essentially 0-0, as the coaches would say, going into the second half. What are you looking forward to as we looked ahead toward the second half? Uh, the chess, chess match or the adjustments at halftime. What do you yeah. think the biggest adjustment's going to be? Well, I think Duke's going to stay to form. You know, they're going to come out. They're going to press these Star Hills extremely high and extremely early. I expect UNC to ease into the game. Let that uh, Just a loaded conference. I believe the top four ACC teams were top 12 in the country to start the season off, and we see there's still five in there right now in the top 16. For North Carolina, not a matter of when or if they're going to get things figured out. It's just a matter of when things start to come together for the Tar Heels. And you saw some great glimpses of things starting to come to fruition for Carlos Simano's team in the first half. There's a lot of talent on the pitch. And I'm looking at this bench. There's a lot of guys we haven't even seen yet. This is an extremely deep team. The coach is just really trying to sort out who has the best chemistry and find his best 11. Nice first half for Elliot Hamill as well. Had that one shot get past him, but the graduate student for Duke, again, turning in a nice performance thus far. He is. He's, he's the unquestioned leader in the goal that leads this defense from the back, and it goes right up the spine through Tino Lopez and, and Peter Stroud. John Kerr saying he keeps everyone accountable, and it's North Carolina who gets us going in the second half. Hamill's the glue in this team. Yeah. You see him, if a guy gets too emotional or is playing out of character, he's usually the guy pulling the team together to calm guys down. Having him back for this fifth year is a, a massive win for these Blue Devils. Bean made a little run there, but North Carolina keeps the possession. We talk about the filling out process to start a match. Is it the same going into the second half, knowing that both sides are going to make some tactical adjustments at the break? Somewhat, but it usually settles down a little bit quicker. They've already got a good sweat going. They've been in a few tackles. They've gotten a few touches. So you're not starting the match, but you're starting over. Goldhar. Now chipped in. Hamill up to play that one and prevents any further play. Good job by Hamill getting over there to cover that. I believe that was Kafaro over there waiting for it to drop on that far post. We talked a little bit about the adjustments going into halftime. Now as we come out, obviously a minute gone here in the second half, what's the biggest thing you want to see these two teams maybe tweak to try to pick up a victory here in the second half? Well, really, who's, who's going to seize the momentum? You know, we see this Duke press. You know, they're starting with – with Mohamed Bean and, and Periano slipping in there when, when they're trying to win the ball back, so they're going to continue to be aggressive. Um, I want to see UNC keep more possession, not allow Duke to be a, be a, a fast-paced counterattack team and really try to win this midfield and continue playing through the wings. Here's Mohamed, but the Blue Devils will be offside there. Mohamed, a, a good run, but offside flag came up. This is everything you'd hope that it would be between these two clubs. You, you always want a close one. You want this one to come down to the wire, and you want them to battle it out. It's going to sound cliche to say, but really when these two teams get together, the records don't matter. I'm surprised we got through a whole <laughs> half without throwing that one out. But they don't. They do not. Faro flicks it ahead, now gets it back. We can already see Tar Heels have picked up where they left off, looking very composed right now. Good job of working that ball through the midfield and also the, the patience to work it back around. Work it around to the other side, now attack from the, from the left flank. Talk about the youth of this North Carolina club. Granted, they have those graduate transfers and those older players who have contributed at other places, but still 13 rookies 
on this North Carolina roster that are freshmen. That's the most by any ACC school. Now that you're, what, five, six matches into the season, are you almost to the point where you don't think of these players as, oh, big takedown there, we play on. Well, you don't think of these players so much as freshmen anymore because now you've got several matches of experience under your belt? Yeah, these these kids are veterans at this point. They've they've been in here. They've been here for a while. But even you know, a testament to the growth of the youth game in our country. You know, a lot of these players coming into these top level ACC schools, they have professional opportunities coming out of high school. So a lot of them have come through formal MLS and other other pro academies, and they're definitely ready for the collegiate level. Does the speed of the game change at all coming out of some of these academies that, that they've been in? Does it change going from that level, the professional opportunities, to the ACC level? It does. It's, it's always a difference in speed of play. And Shaq Mohammed. That, that did not look good from Shaq oh. Mohammed. We've already seen Ruben Masales go down and Mohammed immediately down and grabbing at his lower body. And he's up trying to walk it off. Hoped for a moment that it was just a cramp, but looks perhaps a little more severe than that. I'm hoping it's just a cramp by the way he just popped up, but it did not look good the way he went down. Mm. Yeah, that, that again, that hill got caught in that tackle when he was trying to turn. Just got stuck under him a little bit. Looks like he's trying to walk it off. It was Tim Shells that got tangled up with Muhammad there. Boy, that would be a big loss for the Blue Devils if Muhammad has to come out for any length of time. The ACC Freshman of the Year a season ago, the co-offensive player of the week in the conference. This is a you know, very deep team, and you always have the next man up mentality, but Shaq Muhammad is just a guy you, you, you can't replace. So we, we definitely hope he's okay. Looks like he is. Looks like it maybe scared him. Yeah. So we'll stay in, and Peter Stroud will put it in play for Duke. A little quick there. Jonathan Belinsky, our referee tonight, has done a really nice job keeping the game at a competitive level. I think it's been a very well officiated match thus far. It's been all about the game on the field. Blue Devils trying to engineer a turnover. They do. This is Jai Bean. Oh, what a. Stop, and now another opportunity, and North Carolina there defensively. Cordes halts any further play, and a sigh of relief for the Tar Heels. Extremely fortunate turn of events for the Tar Heels. Did not see Luke Thomas creeping around that corner, winning that ball in the wing, and Jabin was in position, just didn't finish it. A missed opportunity for the Blue Devils, for sure, early in this second half. And we'll look at this again. We see Luke Thomas just creeping around that corner. Wins it. Jai Bean's wide open. Tremendous play to get over by Person. And Riley Thomas yeah, did a good Thomas, job yep. sliding in to win that through ball. Thomas, who went out in the first half, with an injury back in there. Good to see him back in for North Carolina. And that was Zinhard, who's normally very consistent back there. Just, I just think fell asleep a little bit. Just, in, you know, your backs have to communicate with you to let you know Luke Thomas is on that left side. And in a game, the way it's been played so far, Cedric, isn't it maybe a play like that, one of those momentary lapses that can change the game in a hurry? Absolutely. And it doesn't take long, as we saw in that UNC response. I mean, two passes, they were in the goal. So both of these teams can create offense very quickly. Now do quickly through the middle. Muhammad trying to beat his defender, but he's unable to do so. Opportunity for the Blue Devils here on the throw in. And even though Muhammad didn't win that ball, you know, impressed by his ability, again, the repress. You know, he created a turnover by not giving up and throwing his hands up because he lost that ball, but he continued to defend and keep his Blue Devils in good position. Here's Amir Daly who scored the goal for Duke in the first half. Usher to side, another throw in deep in the attacking end for the Blue Devils. And we can see a few adjustments from the Tar Heels based on, 
you know, really hot performers from the Blue Devils in the first half. We see Amir Daly given no space whatsoever, always two guys closing down on him. Every time Peter Stroud's touched the ball, he really hasn't had time to do anything all night. Well, you knew Stroud was going to be a focal point, as he is for most clubs. Stroud is going to be the focal point of any team they play this season. Headed and in! Just wide. No, sorry, just, just wide. But, but just that quickly on cue, Peter Stroud gets five yards of open space, plays a phenomenal ball across. Luke Thomas just missed from that far post. Missed by an eyelash, giving the Blue Devils the lead. Well, the crowd here thought it was a goal. We'll take another look. It was close. Great looping ball across. Thomas is in good position. Edwards didn't have an eye on him. That almost snuck in. Barely. Good job by Cordes covering that corner. A couple of great looks for the Blue Devils early in the second half. Yeah, they've had some opportunities. Honestly, those are two that probably should have been put away. If you're North Carolina, have to feel pretty fortunate that a couple of chances for Duke go your way. These Tar Heels should be very for should feel very fortunate right now. Those two weren't converted. Here's Muhammad. Now for Stroud in the corner. Chips it in. Settled for a moment in the North Carolina. Nice job to get it out of danger. If you notice, Peter Stroud's drifted wide. Last yep. two balls he's received have been down this right flank. When he's receiving, he's playing very easy, trying to get himself back involved and then get the ball across. Immediate opportunity is created from that adjustment. And here he is wide once again. Has Daly there. Instead, it goes to Muhammad. Stroud and Muhammad. Service in and ferried away by North Carolina. And it'll be interesting to see if that trend continues. That is not typically where they want Peter Stroud lining up. They want him in the middle of the pad pitch where he can really be the focal point. Um, earlier in the season, when he gets frustrated, he drifts and looks at the ball. It's working right now, so we'll see if Coach Kerr makes any adjustments. North Carolina winning the possession deep in their defensive third. Couple of great looks for Duke already in this second half. And a substitute, couple of them for North Carolina. Kabaya is in for North Carolina. Olofsson also in for the Tar Heels. Sam Williams goes off. So does Sebastian Schott. Couple of guys who have worked hard for Carlos Samano's club, not just tonight, but really all throughout the first five matches of the year. Yeah, and Olofsson specifically, he's a, he's a starting worthy player on this team, as are many other guys. He'll, he'll come in and immediately get the midfield going. Is that just Carlos Samano maybe looking for a spark off his bench? Yeah, trying to find the right chemistry. And a lot of these the substitution pattern is playing. Sure. But most of it will be dictated by flow of the game here on out. Back to Cordes, who's been busy so far in the second half. And we see that Blue Devil press coming. Periano immediately steps out of that midfield 10 position. One by North Carolina. Olofsson had it taken away. Blue Devils quickly trying to engineer something, but. Yeah, Luke Thomas wishes he could have that one back. Jai Beam wanted at his feet. And Luke Thomas has been a breath of fresh air. Marsalis went down the first half. He stepped in. He's played very well, almost had the goal. Done a good job tracking back. There's at least two plays. He's been the difference maker to win balls back. Doesn't that showcase the depth that Duke has? Absolutely. And, and Luke Thomas is a former walk-on player that has now become a focal point, started some games last year, and he gets good minutes for this team. He's been a great contributor. A couple of looks, as we've mentioned, for Duke. North Carolina really hadn't had a ton of chances so far in the second half. Well, just like the early part of the first half, it's been dictated by the Blue Devils. The only difference in, they haven't scored yet. 
Pass that was telegraphed there. North Carolina gets the turnover. Last two builds have been a bit sloppy in the offensive third. Just haven't been executing. Missed the, missed the ball to Jabin a few plays ago. Periana, Periana was spinning out that time, wanted the ball in the space, and they played a the feed. Through the middle. Now an opportunity to build here for North Carolina. carbonine has been quiet tonight. He has. Baia plays it back for Zinhard. Who had that great defensive play preventing a second chance opportunity for Duke earlier this half. Jabin's on sides. Just not enough on that ball. And we'll expect, you mentioned Garvanian hasn't yeah. been as involved lately. As this half progresses, we'll see him drift more and more. You know, from that left flank position, he'll be playing more like a forward, I guarantee, if the score line settles. He's the most tenured member of this North Carolina club, playing his fifth year in Chapel Hill. Played over 5,000 career minutes in a Tar Heel uniform, entering play tonight. Bit of a trip there, and a foul against North Carolina. Luke Thomas again, once yep. again in the mix. There's the veteran Tar Heel, who already has half his point totals from a season ago over the first five matches, two goals and assist, five points for the fifth-year player from Albuquerque. Unquestioned leader on the field early in the season for these Tar Heels. Tonight was his 54th career start, his 72nd career contest. Need guys like that on your roster to help anchor your club on the pitch, but also from a culture standpoint. Well, especially when you're incorporating 18 new players. And a stoppage in play. And a card has been assessed to North Carolina and Akeem Clark. And we see Kenny Hott getting a little frustrated on that, that a foul wasn't called earlier. He probably got fouled two or three times. Good job keeping possession. So now Clark has to be careful and how aggressive he plays the rest of this half. And we see Kenny Hott. Good touch on that first ball. There's the foul right there. Second foul, play continues. I like the rough, give him advantage, give him a chance to win it, and then wisely calls it once play settles down. Second yellow against North Carolina tonight. Duke has also been assessed one yellow card in the first half. Two goals coming about 30 seconds apart in the first half. Amir Daly giving Duke the one nothing lead, and then quickly it was Clark who answered for North Carolina, his first of the season. First of the season for both players. Again, Blue Devils not giving Amir Daly any space in the second half on that right flank. Duke forced to retreat. Look at Clark making a push. Really impressed with the match that Clark has had so far for North Carolina. Yeah, he's finally healthy. And you can see it. He is a, he's a difference maker. I think he's done a great job of holding the ball up top and providing outlets, but also doing a good job tracking back. We've seen him mix it up in the midfield trying to win balls back. Not enough weight on that pass. Pinballs around. Now Muhammad settles, perhaps looking for Daly. Muhammad drawing a crowd. And look at the footwork of Daly hopping over a defender. And Muhammad perhaps upset with himself that he didn't possess the ball a little longer. Well, he beat four guys, but he, he didn't beat the fifth. <laughs> but as you mentioned in the first half, a guy who, and most of these players do, strive for perfection every time they touch it. Daly chips one. Looking for position, settled. Now to Jai Bean. Bean leaves it off. Good job by Luke Thomas holding that, yep. holding that ball off to, to keep it in play. Here's Daly. Team over here. Team over here. And possession staying with Duke. Good, good. Daly to toss it in. Uh, 
both these teams, as we've talked about tonight, Cedric, littered with depth. Do you think there's any sort of fatigue or wear down process as both these clubs bring new players off the bench, fresh players off the bench? Not in this, this match. I mean, you know, both of these teams have been several days since they've played. They've done a good job keeping healthy throughout the week. You know, we haven't seen either team really go as bench yeah. from the, deep on the bench as they typically do. Daly looking for an angle. Nobody home. North Carolina wins it. No call, we play on. It's a good job by Kafaro winning that first ball. Winning it back and then Tino Lopez shut that down. And now Duke quickly the other way. Daly feathers it ahead, being settled. Went down, and if that's in the box, boy, that's huge. I think he was just outside yep. of the box. But a great opportunity for the Blue Devils just outside of the 18. It's a good job by Jabin getting, getting his body in position in between the defender and the ball and bring that down. That's what you want from your target forward. You see him look over his shoulder to find out where the defender was, wisely put himself in position, and went down when he felt contact. Zenhard called for the foul. Jabin did a good job of slowing his momentum, based essentially forcing Zinhart to run into him. He was definitely in the box on that. Dean prompting the crowd to make a little noise. And I think our officials are going to take a look here. Well, Peter Stroud standing by the PK spot. Blue Devils feeling like that foul did occur in the box. We're going to get a look from our referee. Well, if it did, this is all on Jabin. Very cerebral play. Looked to see where he was on the field, put himself in the box, basically forced that foul. And you mentioned the little plays, the little yep. difference makers, just those little things. Now, you said initially when we first saw it, you thought maybe Bean was just outside of the box. I thought he was, but on that replay, it looks like he had his feet in the box. Take another look. This is what the officials are looking at. Uh, he was definitely outside. Uh, he, he, he ended up in the box when he fell down, but the foul was initiated outside the box. Yeah, he was outside. But still a phenomenal opportunity for the Blue Devils yeah. just outside of the box. Still a free kick 19 yeah. yards out. So outside the box will be the call. Do you like the use of, of replay to get these calls right? Yeah, I think it's a great addition to the college game. Um, in, any, in any game you want accuracy, referees are only, only human after all. Look of what can be reviewed. Replay was expanded going into this year. Well, especially in these situations. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you want to make sure you get that, that call accurate, especially in a game of this magnitude. Cortez, who's been tested a couple times in this second half. His defense has made a couple of big plays for him as well. But from 19 yards out, a great opportunity. Periano and Mohammed talking through it for the Blue Devils. Either one can be very dangerous. I think Periano takes it, but we'll see. A couple of missed opportunities for Duke already in the second half. This is an absolute golden opportunity right now. This is a set piece you routinely train in practice. This is after training what guys are working on. Mohammed had it knocked down. And North Carolina again survives. But the Blue Devils still have a chance here. And when we see Muhammad's yeah. immediate frustration, putting his hands over his face, he went to take that quickly. You know, Periano was setting it up as if he was going to take it, and Shaq came in and quickly took it, just kicked it into the wall. Another look. Surprised at how quick the Blue Devils went on that opportunity? Not really. I mean, every, everything was set, everyone's established, so you're just looking to see if you can catch someone off guard, slip one in. Great run here by Goldhar, setting it up. Weaving into the box. 
Challenged by Daly. And a corner is won for North Carolina. Great defensive play by Amir Daly winning that ball. We're looking at dig defense, very tight line. Amir Daly, good job. Getting just a toe in to win that. Some subs in for North Carolina. Goldhar, who won the corner a moment ago. Fisher back in. Remember, Fisher was the one, or Williams back in, I should say. He was the one that had the game winner on Tuesday against East Tennessee State, his first career goal. Electric freshman for these Tar Hills. They expect to be a big contributor in this midfield for years to come, hopefully. Williams, the freshman we mentioned a moment ago, he's got the honor here on this corner. Carlos Samano looking to win another battle of the Blues. Williams ready for the service for North Carolina. And Hamill there to hold it. Not a great opportunity for North Carolina there. Not very well executed. And uh, both of these set pieces, the most recent ones for both teams. You like to take them back and have a little better effort. And these, those chances, those missed opportunities have become more and more valuable as this clock ticks on. After Duke had those missed opportunities earlier in the half and then just missed a set piece opportunity from 19 yards out a moment ago, does that give North Carolina more momentum the deeper the second half goes? Yes. The deeper the deeper this second half goes, it plays as an underdog. And I don't know if you can really call them an underdog in this match, but sure. on paper. But on the flip side, does the pressure build more for Duke? Because on paper, the Blue Devils are the favorite in this matchup tonight. It does. And that's typically when you see the team start pressing, going more 1v1, maybe more long balls versus keeping on the ground. Duke has to focus on staying within their identity and stick, sticking to their game plan. Not often that you hear, you know, North Carolina being the underdog, but the Tar Heels with that thought in mind, with that chip on the shoulder, they can play with house money for the rest of the match. Yeah, it felt strange saying it. Yeah, you're right, it it's, not, it's not something you see often at all, and it probably won't be the case later in the season. But yeah, these Star Hills should have no pressure coming in whatsoever. A team in the preseason that was picked to finish second in the Coastal Division behind Pittsburgh. Duke picked to finish fourth in the division. Again, Luke Thomas just seems to be involved in everything over on that flank. Good job winning balls back. He's been a big spark for Duke since Ruben Masalas went out in the first half. He has. Good ball in. Hamill off his line. He'll play that one. Good communication between Hamill and Lopez to ride that one out. Now Keenan Hot, who's been another big catalyst for the Blue Devils tonight. Kenny Hot had a really good game tonight. I mean, he's really given the structure and consistency in that midfield to allow, allow Stroud to float around a little bit, try to get the ball. Into the corner. And ushered away by the Blue Devils. Lopez again. North Carolina playing it quickly. Sensing maybe North Carolina starting to build a little bit more momentum. We talked about it a moment ago, but they weathered the storm, and now the Tar Heels have been the aggressor. Pace of this game is much slower than the Blue Devils want to play. This is a Carolina pace game right now. And we see they're doing a good job of keeping possession, breaking lines. They're building the ball up to flank. Look much more cohesive than in the first half. Nice run here, and just hopping over the boot. North Carolina trying to track it down and keep it in. Good play. Gervonian, once yeah. again, winning that back. Now and, a talented freshman. And we may be seeing this North Carolina team gel and mature right before our eyes. Nick. 
Duke trying to be quick on the throw in there. Blue Devils will get Scotty Taylor back in. Cameron Kerr also returning for Duke. A breather for Bean and Periano. Smart sub, you think, by Duke head coach John Kerr? Yeah, with Bean coming back, he played 58 minutes left last game, but you don't want to risk further injury with him coming back, still getting his fitness. And Scotty Taylor's played well. Mm -hmm. You know, he's played well in this match and typically plays well against the Tar Heels. So I think two smart subs. Cameron Kerr comes in, he'll be energy and help help lead this press, create some turnovers. Goes back to the depth that we talked about really ad nauseum in the first half. Dangerous ball there, and again, Duke just has to get it out of harm's way. Aceto did a good job of holding that up. I think he's had a very good game in the back for Duke. And an opportunity now for the Blue Devils to put it in play. Pace, as you mentioned, has certainly slowed here. Final 21 plus minutes of regulation time. Has to be a frustrating half for Duke with all the missed opportunities that the Blue Devils have had. Yep, the key is to have a short term memory and not dwell on them and keep moving forward. But again, less time in this match. Mm -hmm the more you remember those missed opportunities. There's Peter Stroud. Much like Gravanian for North Carolina, Stroud has been pretty quiet tonight. He has. Obviously the best players garner a lot of the attention, but it's been a lot of other guys that have gotten involved in the proceedings early for the Blue Devils in the first half. It was the first goal of the season for Amir Daly. Well, great, great ball by Marsalis. Amir Daly with the extra effort to be there. And then 30 seconds later, another great ball. Keem Clark in good position, slots it away. And that's where we're at so far. We've been 1-1, but a couple of missed chances for Duke. Blue Devils have outshot the Tar Heels so far, 10-3. to three. But shots on goal, fairly even four shots on target for the Blue Devils and three for North Carolina. Yeah, this second half has been very, very even. You saw Frederick coming in for Duke. So Duke will have Frederick and Daly both in there at the same time. We talked in the first half how similar they are in their styles of play. Well, especially with Marsalis out with the injury, I mean, this is probably your most, your two most dynamic options coming up those wings, and they're very comparable. You could flip-flop them, and you're going to really see the same player in a lot of ways. So now Duke wins the corner, their eighth corner of the match. And really, we, we talk about, you know, coach chess pieces, bringing Frederick on the other side with his, his dynamicism. It, al it allows Amir Daly to have more time over here. Off the corner, Taylor trying to get free. Kept in, though, by the Blue Devils. Here's Muhammad. Now for Kerr, Peter Stroud. Stroud had it knocked away. A hard collision. Muhammad puts one on, but will get a foul against Duke before the shot by Muhammad. You see Peter Stroud trying to play that ball across. Cameron Kerr. He gets ball, but he got a lot of man to follow through. And we've got a card here assessed to Duke. It'll go, I believe, against Kerr. As Sam Williams, the talented freshman, took a hard tumble. And that was probably a little frustration for that previous play. Yeah, Sam Williams went down pretty easy on that one. Cam Kerr did get him on the jersey. 
Williams maybe playing beyond his years a little bit there to help get the call. And we talked about how yep. these, these freshmen aren't really freshmen. You know, they're wise beyond their years. They played at a very high level. Knew exactly what he was doing. Williams playing for the New York Red Bulls. Over 2,000 minutes for the Red Bulls. Take down there, and there's a foul. And in the middle of the park, another chance for the Blue Devils. It was Scotty Taylor getting tangled up for the Blue Devils, and I believe with Sebastian shot for North Carolina. And it seems like Shot's the one that took the brunt of the collision there and was asking for a call against the Duke Jr. Yeah, it looked like it. Like a few guys got knocked around. Kabaya was in there as well. Yeah, it looks like Kabaya actually inadvertently knocked him in the shot. And we'll go to a review here on the foul. Certainly looked to me like Shot might have taken maybe a, a, a inadvertent arm toward looked, the head. It looked inadvertent, like he was trying to gain momentum and honestly didn't know he had a Duke player on his side. I don't think it was malicious at all. So our second video review of this half. Final 18 minutes of this one. And what has been a, man, a really tightly hard fought game. We'll take another peek. There's shot going down, getting tangled up there. That was the end of the play. Let's take another glance. Watch maybe for a high hand to the face. Right there from Scotty Taylor. Yep, Scotty, Scotty Taylor is just trying to get momentum, win that ball back. Don't believe that was malicious at all, but it was contact to the face. Verdict is coming. Yeah, he took a nice one. See, yeah. some, see some blood drawn. So the North Carolina training staff will attend to Sebastian's shot the ACC preseason watch list selection a transfer from St. Mary's where he played over 6,000 career minutes at St. Mary's great standout career at St. Mary's three-time all West West region three goals last year led the team in minutes started all 69 games of his career at St. Mary's And it's not like North Carolina when they added these transfers, they added guys who didn't have success before. I mean, they added a lot of impact players to their roster. Well, they've done, a, obviously, they do a great job of recruiting, but they've done a great job of working the transfer yeah. portal the last few years. And, and this year, being unique, where coming out of COVID, you've got a lot of guys who have these fifth years, and there's some really good players looking for opportunity to play at these type of schools. Some of these players from North Carolina still have two years of eligibility left, so you have a chance to build a cohesive unit with all these talented freshman the Tar Heels wasting no time getting back to the top of the pack in the ACC once these guys begin to gel this is a team that will only continue to improve service in headed away another opportunity here for Duke off a corner Sebastian shot quickly back in after getting the blood taken care of And, and speaking to Coach Samuanwe, I mean, the, the biggest challenge is sometimes getting these guys to come to school. You know, the type, sure. type of player they recruit, you know, which is, you know, the gift and the curse of a lot of elite institutions is you're recruiting guys who could easily go professionally. And it happens every year. So Kerr will take the corner. Now shot having to come back off. I don't think he was allowed to come back in quite yet. And now Kerr with the service. Near post, Mohammed got a foot on it, but couldn't convert. Beautiful night here in Durham at Koskinen Stadium. Great crowd has gathered for the 98th meeting between Duke and North Carolina. Great to have you with us. Chris Edwards with Cedric Burke. And no surprise here, this game has lived up to the billing once again. Absolutely has exactly what we expected from this from this rivalry match and probably honestly a little bit better. A battle in the middle third. Daly trying to win it for Duke. He helps 
Propel the Blue Devils to possession. Now Muhammad. Trying to win one for Taylor in the corner who fights for the Blue Devils. And it's won by Duke. It's a great battle. Scotty Taylor did a good job. We see his burst of speed to win that ball. And Zinhart defended it very well, right into that bounce. Daly, who had the goal for Duke in the first half, tripped up. That one's coming back. Now this should be another great opportunity for the Blue Devils right outside the box. Great opportunity to play a looping ball in, get a run onto it. Duke unable to convert in a similar situation earlier this half. Really, it's been two or three missed opportunities for Duke this half to try to take the advantage. Two very strong opportunities inside the box, as well as a couple of set pieces. This will be Hot who will take it. Has worked extremely well for the Blue Devils tonight. Hot. It's a good ball. Far post and a nice play by Cordez. It's a great ball from Kenny Hot. Cordez did a good job stepping in to shut that down. Mentioned it earlier, two standout keepers for these clubs. Before tonight, Hamill had only allowed one goal for the Blue Devils this year. Cordez was number two in the ACC when play began tonight with 14 saves on the season. And he only allowed four goals on the season. Very strong keepers on both sides. And Hamill's got a, a 1.08 lifetime goals against average. He's been very good for a very long time. There are the two keepers who have done great work for both their squads tonight. And Cordez has been tested a lot in the second half and has made some big plays. And we've seen the last few minutes, specifically with, with Cam Kerr and Scotty Taylor coming in, Duke has ratcheted up the pressure quite a bit. Final 15 minutes. When does the, the scoreboard and, and the time, when does that become a factor in this second half for these two teams? I think you get under 10 minutes, guys start looking at the scoreboard. And you hope guys don't start pressing too much, doing things out of character, but, but that's when the opportunities present themselves. So a lot of, and you know, have to watch the fatigue. Guys are gonna have to stay mentally focused and checked into this game the last 15 minutes. Cafaro back in for North Carolina, the transfer from Barry, where he was the Sunshine State Conference Freshman of the Year a season ago. Also a first team all conference, scored nine goals, had 25 points. So maybe not the marquee name, but certainly high-level success. He's a gem. Now an opportunity, perhaps, to build for North Carolina. Williams, the freshman. If you're, we see the patience in the Tar Heel attack. If you're North Carolina, who, who are you looking to lean on in the final 14 minutes? Well, we, we see Milo Gavranian probably about to receive this ball pretty soon. Keeping you know up that side. Now, Kafaro has been very dangerous as we see him with that turn right there. Actually, that was Goldar with that turn. Yep. The ball played to Kafaro, but Kafaro has been very dangerous there. Goldar had the assist on the first goal. A lot of talent up there for the Tar Heels. Goldar's already scored a goal for North Carolina against FIU earlier this year in his first career start. Look at the move by Daly. Yeah, he had the game winner in that one. Yeah. Whoa. Now Taylor trying to track it down and wins it for the Blue Devils. What a move by Amir Daly to win the possession for Duke. Well, not only win the possession, but he got the immediate Meg through Gavarnian of all people's legs. And another set-piece opportunity for the Blue Devils. Eventually, you've got to convert one of these if you're the Blue Devils. Yeah. Corner number 10 of the match coming for Duke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Service in, headed just high. I suspect there's going to be a lot of focus on set pieces in the next training session for these Blue Devils. A couple of really mi big opportunities missed by Duke. A couple of balls just outside of the 18-yard box. And hard to talk about the second half and not talk about the two misplays the Blue Devils had. Open looks at it early in the second half where they couldn't convert. Yeah, if the Blue Devils don't convert something in this final 12 minutes, that's going to be the, the tell of the tape in the second half. North Carolina wanted the foul there on Daly, but we play on. Daly plays with a chip on his shoulder. 
Taylor, who scored the only goal for Duke so far tonight, he's got it. For Mohammed now. Mohammed, and that one knocked down. And one again for Duke. And Muhammad's just got to be aware of where he is on the field when he's isolated. Make sure he has teammates around him to help. Turned over. It's a bad place for a turn turnover. Kenny Hyatt's got to track back. Makes another nice play to the Blue Devils. Good job by Axel winning that back. Good Borson with a nice play. Now Muhammad with some space. Crowd perhaps sensing an opportunity for Duke. This is Daly, sends it into the box. Now settled, Stroud looking for some space. And Hot has to play it again for Duke. And that will go unnoticed because the final pass wasn't completed, but absolutely brilliant takedown of the ball by Peter Stroud. Very Christian Pulis, I guess. Yes. This way it comes for Axel Gaborson. A couple of goals for Axel this year. Plays a nice ball ahead. Taylor had it knocked down. North Carolina keeping it in. And out to play that one, Cordez, and just has to get it out of harm's way. So Duke a great opportunity on this throw in deep in their attacking third. And look who's back in for the Blue Devils, Luke Thomas, who has worked extremely hard at times for Duke tonight. North Carolina, though, will counter with another force of their own and Akeem Clark, who had the equalizing goal for the Tar Heels. Well, Akeem Clark and Key White, and that's a pretty big counter to bring Luke Thomas in. Tells you exactly what Carolina's mentality is right now. They're, they're looking to close this game out. They're bringing their two main difference makers up top. Stroud and Daly. Nice ball in. Daly had it on his boot for a moment. North Carolina wins it. The speedster White goes down. <laughs> And we see Peter White, and these, those guys know each other quite well. We see, we see Peter Stroud give, give White a little smile as he knocks him out of bounds. Under 10 minutes remaining. And there's a stoppage. And a yellow card to the Duke bench. Got a lot of passion over there. We see Coach Brady wisely telling Coach Kerr to take a few steps back. We need you to finish this one out, Coach. I believe they might have given Coach Brady the, the yellow card there. He's taking a seat. Yeah, he's sitting down. <laughs> Here's White. Now, this is a great play by Hamill with Clark racing in. Great play by Hamill, and honestly, probably Kafaro waited a little too long to play that ball. Akeem Clark had his hand up a half second earlier. When the ball was played, he didn't have momentum. Hey, Cam, get in there! Stroud settles. Now Duke forced to build. Come on, Key! Come on, Key! Come on, Key! Here's Daly. Bro, that seems so interesting. Nice play. And now North Carolina and Key White. And this is, is a counter with numbers right now. Gravanian's getting high. Key White in position. Clark is there for a through ball. There's White. Oh, it bounced off his boot. Kept in by North Carolina. Battle there. Now Williams, who had the strike for North Carolina last game. He strikes again, and it's deflected in. A nice play by Hamill. 
to come off his line to keep it in. Good play by Hamill, and he'll, he'll take his time on this. He'll calm his team down. Blue Devils have to be careful. You cannot give these Star Hills that much time and to have patience to combine their offensive third. Now that we're down to less than seven and a half minutes remaining, do you sense any sort of pressing here from the Duke squad? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I think they've, they've stuck, st stayed in character for most of this half. Um, a lot more dangerous in his right flank lately with Amir getting up, combining with Peter. Right, you show this down. Let's go! Really, if Duke can do a quicker job of switching the point of attack, we see Amir Daly wide open on this right flank. A few plays ago, Luke Thomas was wide open, and they couldn't get it across. And once again, giving the Tar Heels a chance to, to have momentum coming up in the build. Bit of a misplay there, Daly. Well, that was a good pressure from Shaq yeah. Muhammad. Really forced Garvanian into making that mistake. No, 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 no. Muhammad goes down. Should be a yellow card. Hey, come on, hey, come on. And a foul against the Blue Devils, and now things getting a little chippy here. Garvanian going nose to nose with Peter Stroud. Not, neither one of those guys will back down from each other. And wise by a referee to let cooler heads prevail. Now look at Stroud. And, and look at Captain Hamill yeah. run, running out of the box to calm his team down. He's going to wisely pull. Now Peter's okay, but Hamill's going to pull him out. Let me talk to the ref. Get out of there. Look at him. Sending him to the sidelines. Shaq, you get out of there. Let me handle this. There's Elliot Hamill, the graduate student for Duke. According to John Kerr, it's been Hamill who's really used those leadership qualities he's learned at Duke to provide an inspiration and the, the leadership for this club on the pitch this year. We'll, we'll take we, another look back. We saw it right there. I mean, we see this. You know, there was a foul there, and, and Stroud initially and Gravanian took him down. Two competitors going against each other. Neither is going to back down, and they're going to let each other know. Nice job by the referee getting in there, separating those two. Cooler heads prevail. Cooler heads prevail. You know, those are your two marquee players. We want to see them both finish the game. What I was most impressed with was Hamill. Came all the way out of the goal to make sure Duke's most dangerous player stayed in the match, kept his head, calmed his team down. Another foul there against Peter Stroud. North Carolina wanted to call, didn't get it. Now Muhammad thought he might have taken a little bump to the head. Instead, North Carolina plays it back to Cordes. Cordes is not taking any chances back there. Final five and a half minutes. Now Stroud. And you can perhaps sense some urgency on the Duke side now with less than five minutes remaining. There, there's an absolute sense of urgency. It's important to remember there, there's five minutes, but that's still a lot of time. Don't press and create a mistake that leads to, to a counterattack by the Tar Heels. Trying to force that one to Muhammad, perhaps. Stroud. Battling for Duke, it's won by North Carolina. This is the dangerous Clark. And we see guys bouncing off of Clark like bowling balls. Opportunity for the Tar Heels, knocked down nicely. Well defended once again by Luke Thomas, getting in there. Thomas, who won a ball earlier for Duke that nearly resulted in the tie-breaking goal, has done Great work for the Blue Devils this evening. 
Kabaya back in for the Tar Heels for the final three minutes and change. Great opportunity here for North Carolina as Clark battling for the Tar Heels. We talk about how dangerous these set pieces have been. Is North Carolina now the squad that's going to convert one? Well, these set pieces are always dangerous, especially three minutes left in this match. Blue Devils have to stay marked up on this through the final whistle. Kafaro will take it. You see the discrepancy in corners tonight, dominated by Duke. Headed away nicely by the Blue Devils. Now Duke has to step out. It's in hard. UNC has lots of numbers looking for that ball over the top. Zinhard flared it in. And now Duke with the clear. Look at Muhammad bearing down along with Scotty Taylor for Duke. This Duke back line has to be very careful and get out and, and condense the space, giving Carolina a lot of room to play in this midfield right now. Flicked ahead, and the goal kick coming for the Blue Devils. As we tick toward the final two minutes, Duke will re-enter Jai Bean looking for a spark for the last two minutes and change. Duke is very heavy offensive minded right now with Scotty Taylor, Shaq, and Jai Bean up top. Now Bean, another nice move, but unable to elude the defender. Remember, no overtime, new rule this year in college soccer, so if no one scores in the last 105 seconds, it'll be a draw. But still plenty of time for both clubs. Here's Taylor battling on the touch line, and it's won by North Carolina. Scotty Taylor definitely thought that was a corner for the Blue Devils by letting that go out of bounds. Less than 90 seconds left. None of the previous 10 meetings have resulted in a draw. But we're close to that tonight. Unless one team can find a way to reach the back of the net. I don't like the draws. I'm a purist. <laughs> only one, there can only be one winner. I agree. Still time here for these two clubs? Yeah, there, there's still time until the final whistle, but there's not much. You expect each team to maybe get one more opportunity. Duke wants to play it quickly here. Less than a minute to go now. They just lost 20 seconds on that throw in. Bit of a desperation there by Mohammed. Bean tracking it down or trying to for Duke. And another goal kick won by North Carolina as we approach the last half minute. Perhaps time for one final build. This will be the final push you would expect. Clark trying to win the 50-50 ball. Clark took one. He's down in some pain with 10 seconds to go. And that one over the touchline. That should do it. And with four seconds to go, this 98th meeting between North Carolina will end in a 1-1 draw. Neither team will be satisfied with this. I <laughs> think they... Both had opportunities to win this match. You know, probably the story of the second half, as we said, is those two early chances from the Blue Devils they didn't put away. By far their most dangerous, most dangerous opportunities of the second half. 